the arrival of ChatGPT, the artificial intelligence app, sent news presenters the world over into a tizzy. Could an AI robot do their script writing as well as they could, or perhaps more worryingly, even better? There's no doubt that these new tech developments will usher in greater productivity and efficiency and financial gain for many businesses. However, this fast-growing app, capable of generating sophisticated human-like text, has also raised concerns over potential harmful impacts on employment. Uh, call centre staffs, other customer service lines will soon be replaced by AI chatbots using the GPT-4 software or maybe five, six, whatever it might be. But to talk about the growing influence of AI, I'm joined now by the CEO of Idro Analytics, Aidan Donnelly. Aidan, good morning. Good morning, Pat. How are you? Now, AI was a, a thing uh, only a few short years ago where people said it'll never mimic humankind, really. It'll do certain things, but it can't do that. Yes, that's true. But there have been some... Uh, significant uh, developments, I would say, firstly, in uh, compute power. Uh, the idea of AI is actually quite old, it goes back to the 1950s, and it was theoretical back then. But really, since the early noughties and onwards, the massive compute power required to build sophisticated AI models has become available at cost effective price. And that has allowed researchers to develop type of technology we're talking about today. Yeah. Now, the kind of computing power, I mean, we see it every day when we Google something. Yes. And uh, if you look closely, you'll see, well, there were 4,572,000 uh, responses to your query. And it happens yeah. in the blink of an eye. So we actually take for granted a lot of computing power. Absolutely. Cloud, I mean, cloud technology is really behind all of this, you know. And I think it's interesting for ChatGBT, uh, their main sponsor is Microsoft, one of the biggest cloud providers in the world. And hence they've made uh, their cloud platform accessible to OpenAI, the company behind ChatGBT. Mm. Now, to explain to, to uh, the layperson like me, um, how does it actually work that uh, an artificial piece of technology uh, can actually write something, write an essay about Shakespeare. What is what is that machine doing in order to produce uh, five paragraphs on William Shakespeare? So in it's called a, a, a large language model and what um, the researchers or the developers behind ChatGBT did was they um, fed in millions and millions of articles about everything, but including William Shakespeare, his sonnets, research papers on him, dissertations, novels, everything uh, really that they could find. And then this model uh, can determine the likelihood of one word following another word. So if you talk about William Shakespeare, you're more likely to talk about sonnets, love, um, rather than, let's say, chemical reactions or yeah. business plans. But all of these letters and numbers are simply zeros and ones. Yes. Um, when we're talking about it's, it's deductive reasoning, in a sense, that the machine is doing in yes. order to construct even a sentence. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is it. This is the magic of it, because it does seem like it's deducting, right? But, but it's, it's not. It's not. It's predicting. It's, it's, it's simply a, um, a probability of one word following another, right? So if it finds, let's say, the word today is a rainy the word that's likely to come after it is not going to be bicycle or month today is a rainy day so it knows with a very high degree of probability that the word following it is day and it's an extrapolation of that now it's so th that's what it is so the, the the people who program the ai bot are setting down a set of rules yes they're allowing it to determine patterns in sentences, right? And I suppose the real power of ChatGBT and the GBT4 technology behind it is not only does it look at the probability of one word following another, but it uh, the develops concepts. So it can say in a body of text, if you're talking about one concept here, then the probability of another concept following it in the following paragraph is much more likely. And therefore, it can build very plausible articles or write very plausible articles uh, in, in in seconds, as we yeah. have seen. Now, uh, to what extent is uh, the uh, chat GPT the ultimate plagiarist? 
copying. Yeah, that Do, I mean, are there phrases that you could say, if you could search widely enough yourself, you could say, that phrase produced for me by Chat GPT was actually from page 54 of a thesis by John Bloggs on uh, Shakespeare. Yes, there have been allegations of that, and it is a bit of a grey area. Now, what I would say is that, uh, you know, a, a, a distinctive phrase would show a high degree of creativity, and chat GBT is more about the most frequent occurrences, right? So uh, if there was that phrase on page 54, as you mentioned, it's probably in dozens of other uh, articles as well. So it's not like, uh, I don't know, stream of consciousness from James Joyce. That's, it's not going to repeat something like that, but it will repeat the type of content that you would see in well-written uh, okay. articles. Suppose I said to ChatGTB, and at the moment I can't talk to it, I think I have to type it in, yes, but currently. I will be able to talk yes, to it in will. time. I said to it, look, I find it very difficult to get through Finnegan's Wake. Will you rewrite Finnegan's Wake for me in a form that I can actually understand? Yes. Yeah, so Could it do that? Yes, I, that, I think it's a great uh, question, uh, particularly something like Finnegan's Wake. Uh, when ChatGBT was released in November, uh, it was built on a version of GBT, which was 3.5. GBT4, which came out uh, just two weeks ago, is a lot more powerful. And I suspect, though I think it will be a good test path to put it through it and see if it does come up with a, a good summary of it. Mm. Now, um, AI is there, and in fact, it's been there for a while in yes. not as sophisticated forms as ChatGPT, but it's been there. Where is it currently used in our own experience? Yeah, I think probably most people will have had an experience of AI in, let's say, on Amazon, right? Uh, you know, you buy something on Amazon and it says people who bought this also bought that. Yeah. Right now, that's kind of it's machine yeah. learning. That would seem very simple yes. compared to what Chat G GPT Absolutely. is doing. It is very simple, but very effective. Right. Um, I think, you know, if you're listening to music on um, Net, uh, Spotify, Spotify yeah. you know, it will make recommendations to you based on your previous listening habits. Um, but I would say in business, um, like you know, in Idaho, like we've been in business 20 years and we've been uh, helping companies uh, use AI for business purposes. And like going back 20 years ago, telecom companies in Ireland have been using AI to understand customer behavior, to predict customer behavior and ideally to serve customers better. So anticipating mm. what the customers want before they contact the company. Yeah. Now, th that's, if you like, the backroom strategic yeah, use of AI. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to actually calling those telephone providers, uh, and at the moment yeah. you do get a person eventually yeah. when you hold and then press one or press two, press four, press five. Is that all going to be done by machine? I think so. You know, I, I think... I think the common experience of people dealing with service providers, it's pretty negative across the board. Um, people don't like waiting 20 minutes to get a call answered. And these uh, technologies like uh, ChatGBT will provide a level of service that's just simply unparalleled to what so is So it'll be better, to. you're saying? It'll be much better. It'll be more cost effective. It le should lead to happier customers and probably lower costs mm. for those companies. Now, we don't want to see an economy that is bereft of jobs. So yes. what jobs will be lost in the yeah. AI revolution? Yeah, you know, I, I think and one of the first ones is going to be call centers. You know, that's for sure, because call center work is costly. It's tough work, people who do that. And they're, they're nonetheless, the customers are invariably unsatisfied. Yeah. Because so instead of having a room with 100 people in a call centre, yep. you'll have a small office with maybe three people who are the final human recourse. Absolutely. When you've exhausted the bots, exactly. eventually you'll get to a human because the bot can't resolve your problem. But the bot will resolve most of the problems. Most problems, yes, absolutely. I, I think that's the real positive promise of AI, is to make things better, more effective. But there, yeah, there will be an impact on those jobs, and I think call centres are an interesting one. Fortunately, I, I'd like to think, particularly in Ireland, you know, call centre staff are often transitory and uh, hopefully they will move on to more better, they, uh, jobs. better jobs. Yes. Yeah. Um, the whole academic argument that uh, the, the, the bots would be writing the essays and so yeah. on. I, I was just thinking that, well, <laughs> you just go back to the old fashioned exam, lock people in an exam hall without their phones and tell them write an essay on Shakespeare's sonnets. Yeah, I think. Off you go. 
Absolutely. I mean, we've heard already of many students around the world submitting dissertations based on uh, content produced by ChatGBT. And to counteract that, other companies and people have developed technology to scan a document and say this was actually generated by AI. But I think you're right. People will have to produce back to the, original old, kind, yeah. the old way. Absolutely, yeah. And maybe even back to the pen. You're not allowed to bring in a laptop <laughs> yeah. because of access to uh, perhaps chat G- GPT. Now, a letter has been going around signed by people like Elon Musk yes. uh, asking for a pause in the development of AI. Why? And you've signed it. Yeah, uh, we signed it. I, I think, look... It's, it is ex- the development of AI is developing so quickly that the regulators are struggling to stay up to date with it. The EU has been working on regulation around this along the lines of GDPR for six years and it's been postponed. And we think that we need to, put, we need to draw a line in the sand. And even if the up regulations need to be updated, because there, there is a bit of an arms race going on in terms of the development of AI, we can see, you know, in commercial field between Google and Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Microsoft are the backers of chat, GBT really. And uh, the we, we don't really fully understand a potential impact of AI and we need to make sure that AI that is being used is fair, transparent, non-biased and we don't have regulations around this at the moment. You know the Chinese paranoia at the moment, everyone's worried about Chinese. So you have these uh, bots that might be developed by the Chinese which will always write an essay saying how wonderful the Chinese are. <laughs> that yeah. sort of, and, and maybe not as obvious as that, but uh, you know, an implicit uh, bias that might be built into all sorts of things. Absolutely, and you know, you can automate this so it's feeding into social media platforms all around the world, spinning a particular message, spinning fake news, and we just need to regulate this I mean, not stop uh, uh, permanently the development of AI for good, but we need to control it. Because uh, we know how the Internet, a great thing for for the good of humanity, but the Wild West in in other ways and social media platforms not being properly regulated and so on. So we don't want to make the mistake with AI. Absolutely. And I think if you look at the likes of even chemicals, right? We regulated chemicals. You can use it for good, but you can't use it in warfare, stuff like that. We and editing of the human genome we have put laws down. Aidan Connolly, CEO of IDRO Analytics, thank you very much for uh, joining us.